All right, Bobby, let her rip. 16. 10. Dude, that was like 80 miles an hour. Welcome to Rotor Ride. I'm Bobby FPV, and this is the drip. This is Eric, this is Mako, and this is Sean. I and am uh, this is the Outlaw! This is a sub 250 gram five inch drone. Now when Sean first put this together, we were really excited about the idea of doing freestyle with a five inch drone that was under this 250 gram limit that a lot of governments kind of agree, certain rules don't apply. Point this is, is safe. This, this is, is safe. safe. Apparently this is it's safe. safe. Anyway. According to the government, this is safe. But what we found when we flew this is this thing is crazy fast, way faster like, than any of us expected. I can't control it fast. Like, yeah. It's crazy. You know, you originally put this together thinking that we could do some freestyle with this, but when we saw it just go, we were like, dude, this is almost like kind of a race quad. So we brought out Mako Reactor here to see, you know, could you do sub 250 gram five inch racing? I'd love to see you fly this around our track here that we got set up at the chalet. And, and compare it to one of your standard quads. I mean, have you yeah, done it's any? It's a lot lighter. This is missing <laughs> vital pieces. It has to be. That is a full five-inch quad, and it's actually got the DJI system in it. When you first put it together, you did you did, I did shark, the shark bite, bite system, right? Because I thought it would be a lot lighter, but I was able to still keep it under 250 grams easily with the DJI. So you added a little bit more weight to the drone build, but you can save that weight by going to a little bit smaller battery. So on here we got what's still a six fifty fifty for us, which means you still get about a six-minute flight time. You guys. Until you hold it in your hands and you realize how light it is, like I've been flying the DJI FPV, that's all I've flown, right? Yeah. This is less than the weight of half of a battery. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> it's silly. Let's get some laps and see what see what this does. It's not all about top speed either on a race course. Plus the batteries now, like dude. Right, yeah. 82! Yes! Yes! <laughs> That's pretty That's awesome. 82 is really high. 82 miles an hour. You think your race quad's faster Let's than this? Let's try her race quad and see Let's what it see does. Let's see what your race quad does. I'll yeah. your race quad's faster than this. A Let's sub 250 <laughs> running over 80 miles an hour. It's safe. It's legal. It the government anyone. says it's safe. How fast do you think one of your normal race quads go? Maybe 95? 90, oh, it could 90. be a little faster. Oh, oh that, that is way. I just wanted to that, kind of start that off that's just that's to show you. I thought it was low enough. 102, oh, oh, what? 99 miles an hour. Whoa, oh my God. 99, 99, oh no, This battery is dead. So I bet wow. it can go more. Wow. I, I, 99 exactly. Like and not a not a single wow. not a single bit faster than 99. That was wow. uh, I think it go faster. Terrifying. Than that. that was nuts. That was terrifying. <laughs> that was a little yeah. higher than 90. Theoretically, I bet it would go 110. Yeah. Theoretically. Theoretically. Yeah, yeah. Theoretically, theoretically, theoretically yeah. I think oh. it could hit yeah. 110. Because, because but that was right, right there is 99 miles an hour. hour. <laughs> Straight line speed, I think it's clear that law. Well, while it is pretty fast. Not quite up to full racer fast. Uh, definitely faster than our freestyle quads. Yeah. I think I think our freestyle quads probably top out at like 70 or so. But there's more racing than straight lines, right? Well, yeah, and yeah. the big thing here is normally when you're pitching, uh, I've been watching these guys race all day, and normally when you're pitching something heavy around, like when we're flying the DJI FPV, it's got so much weight. As you pitch around, and it starts just skidding backwards because it has all that momentum. Yeah. I think this lighter quad is going to have a massive, I don't know, massive but I also advantage. think having a little weight, like I personally really like heavier freestyle quads. I think it helps me toss it more. So, so I guess, I don't know, I'd like to see how it actually handles. We should have, we should have Mako do some laps with her normal drone, get warmed up, and then do it with the Outlaw yeah. and see how close can you get. So what's your setup, racing setup? My racing setup first, I fly the Diatone GTM frame. It has six millimeter arms, so you are golden in a crash. You're nice. gonna survive that. I also fly the Caudex Nebula microcam because I fly a little bit of DJI too, so you can fly that with your racing quad That's analog nice. or with your digital quad. I fly Hobby Wing ESCs. I have a 60 amp. 
and I fly hobby wing motors. What's the KV on those motors? These are 20, 2450 KV, 2207. 2207 is perfect for racing. So this is totally a quad you could see at like a normal multi-GP race, right? Like Mine's a little heavier, a little bit. A lot of people are flying the lighter weight frames, but I really like the durability of this frame. That's just and I'm running the, the Flight 1 flight controller, the Revo OSD Falco X. I have a tiny tank VTX by Rush, and I fly Crossfire. Yeah. I just love watching her as she gets the plane out, the turns, 1735. faster because they've made the dive gate. Oh, that's going to be a good lap. Back in, she's tracking, keeping it low, picking up speed. Back across the line. 1494. 1494, what a difference that dive gate makes. Yeah. I mean, you've got like eight laps. Fastest time was 1494. Let's go out the fastest time. Okay. Wait, so what is that? Why? <laughs> it the vistas get really hot and she's trying to change the rates. Oh, here, I got it. <laughs> the button behind it is the back button. So this is a little neck fan to keep us cool in the summertime in Florida because it's hot, but we're going to use it to cool off the vista because it's always, these things get roasty toasty hot. See, like every, every time I go into live chat and be like, I'm talking about vistas and air units, you know, they're always like, this is the best. I'm like, dude, you, it says overheating like every, and they all call me crazy. They all laugh yeah. at me. That's the only thing I don't like about the Vista. Everything else about it's fine, but like the overheating thing just kills it for me. Air unit for the win. in the grass. 20 seconds was a nice clean lap though. Like I'm getting better already. See like look at that. Oh great dive it's game. Like, it just takes some time to learn a whole new drone, whole new rates. Oh so much smoother cool. too. So smooth. Much faster. 17. <laughs> it would have been 16. 17 second laps on a quad that you've flown three batteries on. 2.1 seconds off of your best time on your quad. I mean, I think it's pretty clear it's not, there's not like an immediate advantage, you know? I think if there was like a, a big advantage in terms of its nimbleness, like I think it would overcome it. Like I think 17 is a really respectable time for that quad. And what did you do? You did 15, you did 15 on your real quad? 14, nine, yeah. 14, it was pretty close to 14. Yeah. My, my thought process is that this just opens up the location possibilities mm -hmm. for quad races. Like you can now, like let's say we're at Oshkosh this week up in, up in Wisconsin, there's 700,000 airplane people there. And what are we doing? We're flying tiny whips to the campground because you can legally, because yeah. it's light enough. Th being able to fly this, obviously you still need to make sure you have safety precautions, but not having to deal with the FAA. Yeah would make things so much simpler to be able to, to hold races in different locations. Wait, you know? so can I fly 250 gram drones anywhere or are there still restrictions There's on it? There's still restrictions and it varies country to country and, and if you have your 107 and you're following the rules, mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter like that much for what, what you can do. Gotcha. But in other countries, it is a much bigger deal and if you don't have your 107, it also changes things a little bit more and the rules are ever changing, but it always just seems that people draw a line at 250 grams, so it's nice to, to have something under that line. And it's cool to see it actually working with, with full DJI. All right, so Bubby has been getting more into racing and I'd like to see if, if there's even a shot at him being able to keep up with a more seasoned racer while using the Outlaw. And you've also flown that. You're a little bit more familiar with it. Yeah, I've flown it a couple of times back at Vandal Island. Early lead from Bobby. That is some honesty from Mako. Yes. Going Mako back. Being honest as can be. Up to the 180. Ah. Back in. Come on, Bobby. Get through the gate. 
Into the chicane. Bro, this thing just, ah, I'm oh, still up. Oh. Pushing through the chicane, neck and neck now, down to the starting line. First oh, lap complete, Bobby takes she's it. She's catching just up. Just one second ahead. Into the corkscrew, we got two and three, still leading. Bobby absolutely blowing us away with his racing performance. Into the chicane and just barely keep it ahead. That straight line speed right there, she's gonna take it. Lap two is going straight on to Mako. Can she keep it through the corkscrew? Ah. Oh, we got contact. Oh, oh drone down. Thank you. Mako's drone took out the outlaw. Oh man, Mako coming in for <laughs> I the I guess finish. there is something to a little bit more weight. Oh. Hey, there's no rubbing, there's no racing. You that right. was really close though. I mean, it was back and forth. That, that was That's fun. impressive that the outlaw can even keep up. All right, let's get some, let's see some good sportsmanship. Good let's, sportsmanship. Let's good sportsmanship. What we all see here is a superior racer here. Mako. <laughs> well, you just started racing, so I'm blown away. So Mako had a bad start. She was very honest, I went to back to the gate. I was very honest that you went back for I didn't even notice. So you started with a huge lead. Yeah. But she kind of caught up to you. So it was close for a while though. Her straight line speed's taking you, but your ability to get it through the dive gate consistently was making a huge, huge difference. And I think we all kind of came to the same decisions. Like this quad is super fun and it's something that like would never be your daily driver. It's fun to get good at something different. Yeah, yeah it's right? a lot of fun. And if they ever do crack down on the laws and this is the only thing we can fly, it's a lot of fun and we can still do it. But at the end of the day, if you're directly comparing them, full race quad is faster. And what it actually came down to was she knocked him out of the sky. <laughs> It's like being Bowser in Mario Kart. You come out tomorrow and you just say, you're done. <laughs> guys, thanks for watching. We had a great time. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. What do you guys think? What is the best application for these sub 250 gram machines? We're just having a ton of fun playing with them as freestyle, for racing, whatever. What would you like to see? What do you think is cool? Leave a comment down below and we will see you next time on Rotor Riot. Take a look at so Drew hard. as he walks away oh, yeah. once again, champion of the world. Drew can do all the walks of shame he can. All the walks of shame he's wanted in his life all in one day. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The Drew! <laughs>